City apartments are rough. My first two places were both basements, because that's what you can afford these days if you're looking to live alone. Third place, no lie, had a window facing a brick wall only three feet away. I was never looking for a spectacular view. I just wanted a decent window. Until last month when I finally got one. I had moved in December 1st to this super small but super decent apartment. Only a few minutes walk from the subway. The main living space of it extended from the kitchen. And a flimsy sliding door separated that from a small bedroom space. In the east wall of that bedroom space. A floor to ceiling window. I mean sure it overlooked the dirty street ahead. A small coffee place. And a huge community housing building. But my god. The air. The sounds. The sunlight. It was perfect. And so shockingly affordable. I'll make a note here that I've never been much of a horror movie person. It's just never caught my interest. So when I couldn't find any bug reports on the building, it really just seemed like a lucky break. Anyway, after settling my debt with my moving helpers, a six pack of beer and a large pizza, they were off on their way and I began putting together my home. I of course started with the Wi-Fi and the living space so I could work to some tunes. And then I unboxed some stuff for the kitchen. As I was sliding some plates into the cupboard, a knock came at my door. Crap, maybe the music was too loud. Standing on the other side of the door was a small woman. I smiled apologetically. Oh, sorry, is the music too loud? No, it's fine. The walls here are good, she assured me. I wanted to say hello. I welcome you to the building. Oh. I hadn't expected such a warm reception. I had never been greeted by a neighbor in any of my previous places. Oh, thanks so much. My name's Louis. She shook my hand. Quibla. Love to meet you. She peered in my apartment. This looks great. Do you need curtains? I can give you some. I have extra. Oh, thanks, but I'll get around to it. I'm excited to get some of that December sunlight coming through. I said with a laugh. She didn't laugh. It is no problem. They are lovely curtains. And you need your privacy. She said. I chuckled, feeling some tension in the air. I'll make sure to get some curtains up soon. In the meantime, I'll hide all this. I gestured to my lackluster physique. Under wraps. Again, no reaction from my neighbor. A moment later, she forced out a small laugh and then nodded. If you need anything, I'll be down the hallway. 1710. She nodded once more before turning away and retreating back down the hallway. I waved as I watched her go. Nice lady, odd though. Which brings us to my first night. Dark hit, hard and fast, but there were a couple of yellowed streetlights bathing the street and parking lots outside of the closed coffee shop. And the man that was yelling. It started just as I was laying down on my bed. A senseless hollering. Strings of profanity mixed with accusations at no one. But I'm not new to the city. I was near community housing. A place where folks with severe mental illness can very much end up. So, above all else, I need to be patient. Maybe this is why the place cost so little. It would have to be pretty extreme for that much of a price decrease. And this set me on edge. After about an hour of the noise ebbing and flowing, I brought myself up and out of the bed into the window. I looked out over the cold street and watched the snow get caught up in gusts and brought to the man. 
He walked in jerky circles, flailing his limbs from time to time. I touched the cold glass. At that moment, he spun around and he faced me, as if he could hear that barest touch. He froze. No more noise and no more circles. He just stared back up at me. He couldn't have been staring at me. I was standing in my dark room all alone, 17 stories up. But from everything I could tell, he was standing in that parking lot, leaning at the slightest angle, head cocked right up at me. This wasn't good. I took a step backwards, still watching him. The moment that I moved, he broke into a dead sprint. He was running directly at me. My heart laughed. <laughs> but I was inside and there were many locked doors between myself and him. It was totally fine. But that didn't stop me from running to my apartment door and triple checking it that it was indeed still locked. And then watching my apartment door from my kitchen table. And then watching the street from my window to see if I could see him again. And then the kitchen and then the window. Man, it wasn't a great night. The next morning, as I opened my door, it had pushed against something. I full on panicked for a moment, but immediately recognized it as it bundled up window curtains with a note. For the nights, they aren't people. They are cold. Quibla. This was unsettling for sure, but also on a different level. Incredibly insulting. Was she talking about the community housing folk? They were sick, not not people. I let my indignant, humanitarian side overpower my anxiousness over all of this, and I tossed the curtain inside and continued on my way. I got a donut and some bad brew at the coffee shop. Found out that they only operate from 9 to 5 which really isn't ideal for late night cravings and I headed off to work. Night two was much quieter. I didn't hear a sound above the passing of night traffic as I laid down to fall asleep. This felt much more comforting and then it wasn't. It was too quiet. There were other people in this building. There was the community housing just across the street why was it so quiet? I stood up again and wandered to the window. Nothing out of note there. No folks wandering the street. The only difference from the night before was that one street light had started flickering. Maybe I was just getting in my head over all of this. And then I saw the group on the balcony. Five people stood on a balcony of the community housing building about five stories higher than myself. I couldn't entirely tell if they were speaking to her anything from this far, but one thing was for sure, each stood facing out, facing me, staring at me. I whispered some curse under my breath and immediately turned to grab that curtain near my front door. I stomped through my house, hoping that the sound of my own movement would be enough to establish some sort of connection to reason. I was imagining things. I was getting worked up over nothing. But if the curtain would help me feel better, easy as that, let's get it up. I got back to my room just in time to see them jump. In unison, each of the five people on the balcony easily climbed over the railing and stepped off, still staring directly at me through the window. I dropped the curtain in terror and shouted a meaningless, Stop! I scrambled to my phone and dialed 911 while I made a mad dash out of my apartment and into the elevator. Police and ambulance were on their way. As the elevator rang at the ground floor, I ran out of my building and into the cold. And holy crap, was it cold. 
The biting night stung at my skin all over, seeing as if I had left wearing only my PJs and slippers. I ran across that quiet road and passed the shop to the building, dreading what I was going to see. They stood there. That's all. There were the five figures that I had seen only moments ago, plummeting from over twenty stories, stiffly but casually, looking at me with blank eyes. Nothing seemed to be wrong with them physically. I saw no signs of injury. But behind those eyes, I couldn't tell what I was seeing. I walked closer to the building, scanning the area to see if I was wrong, if it wasn't a different group of people, but only came back to them as sirens began blaring. They walked back inside. My mind was a mess. I felt like I was going crazy as the police talked with me, but I held my composure and assured them my eyes must have been playing tricks on me in the night. The sirens retreated back into the city. I slammed my fist against Quibla's door the next day. It opened only a few inches, revealing a chain lock and her eyes. What the heck is going on? I asked. You didn't put up the curtain, she asked, as if this was some normal irritation. How was the freaking curtain going to stop people from jumping from a building? I demanded. They can see well in the dark. They've noticed you. They won't hurt you, but they'll want to be close. She said as calmly as always. What do those people want? They aren't people, and they want to be warm. I sputtered wordless. How do you respond to that? Put the curtain up. It might not stop it anymore, but it'll give you peace of mind was all that she said before closing her door again. And so I did. I put up the curtain and started looking for another apartment. I didn't know what was going on, but I could stay here the two necessary months and head out without messing up my finances too badly. My last night, the curtains were drawn shut and my lights were all off, leaving me in pitch blackness but there was no way that I was getting to sleep. The past two days were running through my head on an endless loop. What was happening in that building? With those people? They were people, right? A quiet noise caught my attention. Barely a noise, really. Like the sound of a mouse squeaking in the wall. It would be nice to have a normal issue like mice. The same sound, but slightly louder. I curled up on my bed. I didn't want to deal with anything tonight. But I also knew that no sleep was coming if I didn't deal with whatever was causing the sound. I slumped out of my bed and listened closely, tilting my head towards the wall. Silence. Maybe I should just attempt to sleep through it. A singular clicking noise like hail falling against glass. There was a chance I was just hearing something coming from outside, and that I was fine, or I was far from fine. They won't hurt you. I shuffled towards the window. They want to be warm. I pulled the curtain aside. Darkness. No streetlight, no snow, nothing. Just the same darkness as my room. I furrowed my brow, absolutely lost. I hit the switch on my lamp. Bodies stuck to the glass from the outside. Awfully contorted and piled bodies. All trying to touch as much of their flesh as possible to the glass at fighting us. Their skin folded and flattened in still life before me. With patches of hair and scars and disease. The various faces clouded the window with their heavy breath, tongues and teeth pressed hard almost like a suckerfish, plastered and frozen in ecstasy. No, not suckerfish, more like moss. 
I screamed and fell back, holding down the bile trying to shoot up. I huddled into a fetal position, rolled away from the sight before me, and I can only describe it as uh, losing my mind. I don't remember much, until dawn came and I saw light piercing through my unmarred window. I left that day. I went to a friend's place and I stayed on their couch. My friends and a couple of cousins I have here in the city had to get my belongings. They all think I just had some sort of random psychological meltdown. It took me this long to get to this point where I'm even considering leaving this house and going back to work. I'm going to live with my friends for a while. And if I do someday get a place again, I am so fine with basements.